Thank you for joining me for this Truth Talk episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the dark truth about Joe Rogan. But before we begin, I just wanted to remind you guys to subscribe to my second channel, Truth Network, as we're getting ready to drop some new exclusive content on the second channel. Once we hit 30k on the second channel, we will be premiering some new shows. The channel would be tagged in the description of this video. Thank you all. Now let's get right into it. Joe Rogan is one of the biggest podcasters in the world. His podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, was labeled the number one popular podcast on Spotify. Rogan is also considered to be one of the richest podcasters ever, as he was allegedly paid $200 million to make his show, The Joe Rogan Experience, a Spotify exclusive. Every episode of The Joe Rogan Experience is said to reach an estimated 11 million views. This makes Rogan a very influential man who influences millions of people with each episode. Joe is also known for having huge guests on his podcast, interviewing actors, artists, and even the billionaire Elon Musk. Fans seem to love Joe's show because he covers a variety of social topics, conspiracies, and religious ideas. The fans appreciate how it seems that even though Joe is such a huge personality, he still comes off as a down-to-earth and honest person. It's almost like even though he has made it to a level where only puppets make it to, he stayed genuine. He has one of the biggest podcast shows that gets pushed by the mainstream machine, and he also got a deal worth hundreds of millions of dollars, all while speaking his mind and not holding back. This is what makes it appear that Joe didn't sell out, and he's one of the few that stayed genuine. Could it be that Joe isn't pushing any agenda through his massive show that is crowned the number one podcast in the world? Those of us here on this channel know this couldn't be further from the truth. We already know everything that reaches the masses gets infiltrated by the Freemasons. With Joe Rogan, it is no different, as he is indeed using his platform to push a very destructive agenda to his fans. Joe Rogan, just like many other celebrities, appears to be a Masonic puppet who took the oath for fame and fortune. See, Joe Rogan has a long history in the entertainment industry, getting his start all the way back in the 90s when he was casted on the MTV comedy show Half Hour Comedy Hour. It's not surprising that his introduction into the industry was with the Masonic television network MTV. After working for MTV, he would make his way to another Masonic-owned company, Disney, who gave Joe his own show on Fox called Hardball. It's interesting that Joe admits Disney hired him without even knowing if he can act. Blindly, they picked Joe Rogan on the spot, and I wonder why. After this show, in 1995, Joe would be casted to act in another show called News Radio. His career would only get bigger after this, as in 1997, he would become the host of the show Fear Factor, a role that he held for six years. Rogan would continue his career by getting into comedy and also becoming a fight commentator for the UFC after befriending Donna White. How can Joe Rogan be against the industry when he's been in the industry for over 30 years? He has been working for the biggest media companies to ever exist. He is as industry as it gets. If we look into Joe Rogan, we quickly find evidence of him being a Masonic puppet. For example, if we look at the logo for his podcast show, The Joe Rogan Experience, we quickly can spot Masonic Enlightenment imagery used in the show's logo. Like we spoke about a few episodes prior, the Masons' entire purpose is to reach enlightenment through Masonic rituals so they can become gods on Earth. Joe Rogan's logo is literally Joe Rogan with a third eye, representing enlightenment. Openly, he is displaying that he is on the Masonic journey of enlightenment. We can also find photos of Joe doing the Masonic all-seeing eye pose. As in this photo, we can see Joe Rogan throwing up the triple six Masonic hand gesture, placing it over one of his eyes. The same enlightenment imagery that is shown on the logo for his podcast. Even more proof that Joe is a Masonic puppet is this photo here. In this photo, we can see Joe Rogan standing next to Stanton LaVey, the grandson of Anton LaVey. For those of you who don't know, Anton LaVey is the founder of the Church of Satan. I have made a full video on the Church of Satan, so if you're interested in more about the Church of Satan, make sure you check this video out after this one. In this photo between Joe Rogan and Stanton LaVey, we can see both of them throwing up the Masonic devil hand gestures while Joe smiles twistedly. Also, if we look at Joe Rogan's shirt, we can see clearly what appears to be a crucified Jesus in flames and triple six on the bottom underneath it. Joe Rogan actually tried to write this all off by saying he only took pictures because he was invited by one of his music artist friends to attend the wedding he was hired to perform at. 
to a wedding that my friend Duncan Trussell was performing at mm -hmm. for these two Satanists in like 2003. And to this day, it was uh, what's the, one of the LeVays, Anton LeVay or Stanton LeVay, whatever is his yeah. son. <laughs> oh. And his son got married. This was some young hedonist, you know, and they call themselves Satanists. And uh, so Duncan performed at this uh, wedding and I went there. To this day, I get tweets about being a Satanist. He states that while he was at the wedding, Stanton just asked to take a photo with him, and Joe claims that he didn't even know who he was. The thing is, this photo paints a different picture to me. Joe claims that he is not a Satanist and that he was only taking a picture. But the thing is, if he weren't a Satanist, why would he attend the wedding of a Satanist who's having a Satanic wedding? I would never attend a Satanist wedding, especially one of a person that I don't even know. On top of this, why would he take a picture with the Satanist while throwing up the devil horns and wearing a blasphemous shirt displaying triple six? To me, it honestly appears like he wanted to be there and he was into what was going on. This wasn't a regular wedding that you just invite anybody to. LaVey had a black wedding full of satanic rituals. Joe Rogan trying to downplay it all just shows that Joe is trying to hide his involvement. He was invited because he is a part of the system. It's obvious that Joe Rogan is acting like he's agnostic when in reality he is a satanist pushing the false new age religion, confusing his audience and directing them to question the existence of God. We can actually see proof of this through his very own podcast. After watching several of Joe Rogan's podcast episodes, I came to the conclusion that he is pushing the new age agenda through his content. He acts like he's leading his fans down a path of spiritual enlightenment, but it's truly spiritual destruction. Rogan has made claims that he is agnostic, which means he doesn't deny nor confirm God's existence. This is similar to an atheist, with the only difference being that agnostic people don't disregard God altogether. But like I pretty much just proved, he truly seems to be more like a Satanist, which would explain his views on religion. Joe paints religion as a disadvantage that keeps people enslaved. He has made it clear that he doesn't like religions like Christianity, which is the same rhetoric heard from those pushing the New Age agenda. These people who push this agenda often ridicule the church and those who are a part of it. Those chosen like Joe Rogan are used to push the ideology of the New World. They are set to normalize these beliefs and guide people away from the teachings of God. They are put here to confuse and distract us, and we can see this very thing in this Joe Rogan Experience episode. Christianity, at the end of the day, with no proof, everything is mythology. Everything. With no proof. With proof, and you examine the proof. It's super simple. And anybody that argues against that is just, you're just biased. You, you have your own ideas. Some proof that there was a God, that this God had one son, made this son come down and get beat out of them and nailed to a board so that we could all have no sin. Do you have, can you show me some studies? Do you have a box of evidence that you can pull out and we can examine all the different pieces that points to the undeniable conclusion that that's true? If you don't, then it's a myth. Then you're believing mythology. Doesn't mean it's not real. If you put all your eggs in that basket and you don't have any proof at all, well, you're entering into this weird world where you don't pay attention to you're entering into this weird world where you ignore certain aspects of things because you've decided what is and what isn't. That's not thinking. That's like it's convenient cookie holder placement of ideas. It's not thinking. Because if you're thinking, you can't accept it. If you're thinking, you go, wait, what? He came back from the dead? Has anybody ever done that? Three days? Came back from the dead. I don't think you can do that. I mean, that's what people would do uh, normally. You know, like I went to my kid had a function today and I went to uh, this function and they're all, we're singing God bless America and there's like something about heaven in there and their school prayer. I'm like, well, okay, are you t are we teaching pe people? We're teaching kids things, right? What's heaven? Where, where is this? Is this a real thing? Are we just pretending heaven's real so the kids feel good and they can get 12th grade? What are we doing here? What are we doing? You know, we have to make up about stuff that we don't know in, instead of just accepting what we do know. Instead of just celebrating and accepting what we know about life, we have to pretend that there's a heaven and you're going to go to heaven when you die. What the f are you talking about? You're teaching my kid nonsense. Why don't you teach him some rumper stillskin? Why don't you make some shit up about leprechauns? You're making it up about heaven. I'm not saying heaven doesn't exist, but you're just making it up. You're teaching a school in a class. You're making them, and then in heaven, God in heaven, God in heaven. Where's heaven? Who's God? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You're making up some. You're making up some in a school, like, and you don't. Okay, like if the kid comes to you, like, um, where is heaven on a map? Can you take me to? He is do we have a Google Earth? Can we check out heaven? Can I see the harp? Oh well, no, you know. Heaven. As you heard for yourself, Joe not only called Christianity a myth, but he also insults the intelligence of those that believe in God. Joe can also be seen questioning the existence of Jesus. 
making it appear as if Jesus never existed, asking for the evidence of his existence. He said all of this even though there is plenty of historic evidence that backs up the existence of Jesus Christ. For example, it's well documented that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and that he was crucified by the Romans. Jesus existed and Joe saying this openly shows his purpose is to confuse and misguide. Joe Rogan also questions the resurrection of Christ, claiming that it doesn't sound logical. This statement shows Joe's arrogance. For whatever reason, with billions of people alive, Joe believes that Jesus should reveal himself to prove his existence. These statements made by Joe just proves his arrogance, as for whatever reason, with billions of people alive, he believes that Jesus should reveal himself to him to prove his existence. He wants God to prove his existence to a man. We also see Rogan talk about how teaching kids about God is wrong and that kids shouldn't be told heaven is real. The agenda literally couldn't be more obvious than this. He is literally arguing that we shouldn't tell our kids about God in heaven because he claims we don't know it exists. The thing is, for us that know God is real, we know heaven is real and we know not to question God's existence. Teaching our children the truth as early as possible is what's going to save them. Joe Rogan thinks that teaching this to kids is nonsense. This shows exactly who Joe Rogan is truly serving. Just like Lucifer, he wants the people to question God and disobey him. He presents this message as a form of enlightenment, implying that having a connection with God is what stops people from seeing the truth. In another one of his podcast episodes, we see Joe Rogan once again ranting about Christianity. But this time, Joe talks about the future when we are in the new Masonic world. And Satan on the bad things and you're praising God for the good things. It's no longer the case. Now we just cling to the weird notions of this one that's watching us all the time. And you've got to sort of peripherally mention it and reference it without going into detail. You do that because it makes people think, well, you're on the same page right. as me. You're a God-fearing right. Christian man. We've moved past Satan, yeah. but we haven't moved past, past God. God. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Or the idea of God. Even the, I mean, if there is some all-knowing entity that is controlling everything and, and is filled with love and has a grand plan for the universe, they have yet to show themselves. It's a concept and an idea with no basis in fact, and as we have found more facts about the nature of reality and the world itself, it seems more and more preposterous with every day. We think now, we love to think that right now that we're filled with knowledge, we love to look at ourselves now and look at the past as, well, they didn't know back then but we know now we looked in the past they would have the same ideas exactly. back of those poor monkey people with the bananas and they go Look, dummies they didn't even know houses yet we will one day look back at 2015 like what a bunch of fools a bunch of ridiculous people that were still they, they had this incredibly complicated society and wonderful access to information but yet they were still shackled down by ideology and in an ancient superstitions that dictated their behavior what a weird time to be in they, they will look at they'll look at us now in 2015 they'll say what a strange time this this adolescent period of enlightenment where they're, they're still concentrating on and the president of the United States can openly talk about God and no one goes, what is God? What are you saying? Like, yeah. what are you saying? Do you think Jesus came back from the dead? Wait, what do you think? Do you think someone walked on water? Do you believe in the literal translation? Yeah. Are you an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? No, well, the New Testament was made by Constantine, who was a Roman emperor who wasn't even Christian. He didn't even believe it. He became a Christian on his deathbed. Like, that's when he became a Christian. It was written hundreds of years after the death of Jesus. So what are you talking about? Because if you're talking about the old stuff, you got to go deep. Go to the Dead Sea Scrolls. Go to the most ridiculous aspects of that and tell me if you're basing your life on that because that's even more preposterous. They found them in clay pots in Qumran written on animal skins. These people thought the world was flat and the sun was 17 miles away. And we're going <laughs> to... They did. This is how we're going to live our lives? Mm. This is it. This is all the facts we need. A large Hadron Collider. CERN, you know... Stephen Hawking's quantum physics, Neil deGrasse Tyson, those dudes with their telescopes. No, we're going to base it on leather skins and, and charcoal ink. Right. Like, really? That's the conversation we're having when we're talking about ideological religion. It's definitely a type of arrogance, and it's also a way that people establish the moral high ground. Yeah. They establish a dominant social position over you, and the people love to do that. They love to do that with their pious attitude. What they're doing is by them accepting these religious tenets, they are somehow or superior. As you heard for yourself, Joe once again questions God and religion, clearly taking the opposing side of God once again. He mentions how in the future, people would look back and think past civilizations were idiots for believing in God. He claims that he can't wait for this period to end. Joe has obviously been set with the purpose of pushing the New Age agenda. 
guiding his fans to accept the views needed for the new Masonic world. Joe openly let the world know that they are planning on eliminating religion and talks of God in the coming future. If you were to ask me, we are already approaching this period Joe was ranting about, as so many people are triggered by talks of God nowadays. When you watch Joe's podcast, you quickly notice he is pushing a dangerous agenda through his content. Joe often talks about his use of ritual hallucinogens on his show, painting them as a good experience. He made it known that he loves to take things that make him trip. This is another principle pushed through the New Age movement that also encourages followers to take substances to become enlightened. The very same agenda Aleister Crowley pushed through his Thelema cult. Crowley and his followers used to take hallucinogens before performing magic rituals. This is the agenda Joe is pushing, the agenda of do what thou will. He is adamant that people shouldn't live life by the morals of God because God hasn't revealed his existence to him. Essentially, he tells his millions of followers to abandon God for this new age nonsense. Joe is pushing the very same agenda Crowley was pushing, and we can see this on his very own YouTube channel. In this episode, we can see Joe Rogan talking with his guest Duncan Trussell, who is teaching Rogan about magic. Interesting about Duncan is that he's on a Netflix show called Midnight Gospel that is just loaded with occult imagery. Alistair Crowley with the title reading, Duncan Trussell explains ritual magic to Joe Rogan. Open as day, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. On the biggest podcast platform in the world, they are teaching the audience about Alistair Crowley's form of ritual magic. This alone should wake people up, but sadly, they are led astray by their idol Joe Rogan. Joe has made it clear what side he is on in this spiritual battle. He is being used by Lucifer to lead the masses astray and guide them to a burning end. If we actually pay attention, we can see these puppets expose themselves each and every time. Joe has been in the industry for over 30 years, pushing their agenda. He was loved so much by the system that he was awarded $200 million and labeled the king of podcasts. So it's interesting to see him pretend to expose the very agenda he is a part of. On many different episodes of his show, Joe seems to expose the industry, but for the most part, he just plays dumb. He brings these topics up to either dismiss them or to quote unquote debunk them. He is the perfect definition of controlled opposition. And I would advise you guys to not be manipulated by his content. We must remember why the elite create these celebrities. 